Hi, my name is Ian Duncan, and today I'd like to introduce you to my open source project, Scheme for Max. Scheme for Max is a Max MSP package that enables scripting Max MSP with uh, Scheme, specifically the S7 Scheme interpreter, which is a Scheme implementation by Bill Schadstad at CCRMA in Stanford, and it's been designed specifically for embedding in a host application and doing music related hacking. It's the one used for the common music algorithmic composition toolkit and works um, very well for those purposes. So the purpose of today's video is just to give you a really fast overview of Scheme for Max and let you see whether it's something you want to dig into further. Okay. So here's our basic tab. Um, Scheme for Max allows you to read files in much like the JS object does. You can either put it in the object itself and then if you double click it, you'll get the source code. You can save or you can also use the read command and if you give it a file name it'll look for that file on your max file include path and one of the nice things it does is allow you to have more than one so when I load the second file the definitions from the first one are not wiped out which means that you can do um, what we call hot coding in Lisp land where you might have your state definitions in the first one and then the stuff you're working on in the second one and your program can be actively running while you're working on new versions of the code of course, sometimes you need to wipe the interpreter, so the reset command gives you a fresh slate all the time. Okay, that's file I.O. Let's take a look at the REPL. So Scheme for Max includes a basic, pretty simple REPL object that you put in a bpatcher, and that allows us to write interactive scheme code. Define a variable. We see it over here coming out of the interpreter, and we can send it out outlet zero. There it goes. So under the hood, all that's going on is strings are coming out of the bpatcher. They're getting prepended the command eval string and handed to scheme for max. As you can see from this example here, if we wanted to, we could even put scheme code into max objects. And as long as we again convert it to one symbol and prepend eval string, that's going to work. Now there's an important feature in scheme for max that's not immediately obvious, and that is that anything that goes to inlet zero gets treated as scheme code to be evaluated and run. Essentially, Scheme for Max pretends that there are some wrapping parentheses around the message. And this works really well because Scheme semantics and syntax map pretty well to, to Max MSP semantics. So for example, this first button here sends the message out 099, and Scheme will treat it exactly as if it's receiving that S expression there. Exact same. Now this means we can actually reference variables in our max messages. So the second one, out zero my var, is going to try and output the value of my var, and we see 999. If we reset the interpreter so that it's starting from scratch, and we do this, we're going to get an error message because now my var is not defined. If we define my var, we're back in business. Now, if we want to get a symbol and we don't want this to be evaluated as a variable, we can use the, the Lisp convention of prepending it with a single quotation mark, telling the interpreter not to evaluate that symbol. So now we actually get the string my symbol coming out. And S7 scheme has keywords as well, much like closure, where the keyword always evaluates to itself. So we don't need to single quote that. And the nice thing about the way that these messages work and the way the semantics map so well to each other is that this allows us to dynamically build scheme code pretty easily. Over here we have a function called, uh, well, a message saying my out $2.1. So if we try that out right now, we're going to get an error because my out's not defined. So if we define my out, we're going to put it into the interpreter, or into the REPL rather. evaluate it, and now we're sending messages dynamically. So one of the things I just did there was I switched the interpreter to control key mode, and when you do that, you can send out the results um, without wiping out what's in the, in the window to allow you to work on functions incrementally and also to allow you to use multiple lines. Okay, let's go to the listeners tab. Now, how can we get Scheme for Max to work with uh, regular messages? 
well, I've made it so that it's a little different on inlet zero and inlet one, inlet greater than zero, so that you can use it in a couple of different ways. Um, inlet zero, as I mentioned, interprets all these messages as scheme code to be run. However, what it does under the hood, if we send it a simple type, a bang, an int, a float, or a list, is the message will be prepended with the symbol f hyphen bang, f hyphen int, f hyphen float, f hyphen list. So that's why we're getting no f int function defined for int messages. If I uh, run the file sm4 help listeners, we're going to get listeners defined. So let's do that. And now these are functions running. And I'll just show you the definitions for that really quickly. Here we go. Function named fbang posts an output and then it outputs a symbol bang of both outlets. Now inlets one are different. We're going to reset again. On inlet greater than one or one or greater, messages are not interpreted as scheme code. They're just simple messages that come in and your function has to have been defined to handle them. So if we send those in, we're going to get error messages that there are no listeners. Okay. So what we need to do is define a function and then register it as a listener, which we, we can do all in one go if we want. So here's an example of registering an anonymous function on listener one and telling it to listen for the symbol foobaz. Now, if I hit foobaz A, well, we're going to get a symbol A coming out. And you'll notice that the symbol A came out, not the definition of A, because this is on inlet one or greater. These are just normal max messages. They're not getting run as scheme code. And that also means that we can have keywords in the first position. So I could change this function and say, we're listening for the keyword foobaz. Actually, that's the keyword foo bar, isn't it? Here we go. That's running. Now, if we want to handle a simple message, let's just run our listeners function again, our listeners code, and drag that over so you can see what they look like. So we've got a simple function called numListener. It accepts a list of arguments bundled up as args, and then it just posts them. And then we tell it to listen on inlet one for both the int and the float keyword. And under the hood, those keywords get handed to scheme as part of the dispatch process. So now those are going to run. So th those are the two ways of listening to functions. And finally, the last feature I want to demonstrate in beta version one is sending messages to other objects. So I'm going to reset again, clear the console. And this allows us to interact with other objects in, in ways that we can't do yet. Just going to make sure this is off. Okay. So these boxes here have scripting names. If I were to look at the inspector for this one, I've set scripting name to target num, and I've set the scripting name for this one to target call and this one to target message. If I use the scheme message send followed by a target and then whatever I want to send, as long as that target has been found in the registry, the message will be delegated off to it. So there's a command called scan, and scan will go through the patcher and all descendant patchers looking for the scripting names and registering them. So now that I've scanned, I can send a message to target num. And let's update its value to 99. There we go. And we can use this to interact with other objects in all kinds of ways. So for example, with a call, we could store at the entry 
a, the values one, two, three. If we go look in our qual contents, we now see a, one, two, three. That first one was already there from me mucking around earlier. Or we can, of course, also send a standard call message where the index number is the first and then maybe some values we want to put in there. There we go. Now this we can also use to build dynamic max messages that will be interpreted as scheme. So for example, if I want to have a dynamic target that I'm sending things to, I could have this message here, send target the message set dollars one. Now, if target has not been defined, this is going to be a mistake. We see errors. But if I define target to be a variable pointing to target message, the symbol target message, now I can update my target message box from this dynamic message. Okay, so that's a whirlwind tour of the features that are in version 0.1 of Scheme for Max. I hope it's enough for you to get um, interested. And you can find it on GitHub. The repository is called Scheme for Max. Documentation and further demos are forthcoming. And uh, I hope to see you on there. There's a Google group. Um, there's bound to be bugs. It's a brand new project. And I'd love to help work through the bugs or help people with any installation issues. Please come join the Google group. And I look forward to seeing you there. Thanks very much.